What I want to do this morning is, is to share our work and there's the prerequisite work that we've done over the last couple of years to reach a stage where this morning I'm so excited to be able to share the work of various communities that we've worked with. We reached a point this week where, with our project, it is our moonshot for this year, 350 um, air quality projects from engineers in industry, um, from communities, from school children, from teachers. It was a really ambitious number, um, with Andrew that I worked with saying, go higher, go higher, so we got to 350. This week it tipped over the first 100, which is brilliant for us knowing that we've got some big projects ready to roll out over the autumn. Um, so actually, I think we will achieve this by the end of the year. What I want to do then this morning is to talk through those challenges, to talk through the work that um, we've reached and the pain that we've gone through to get to this stage where we've got people from the age of seven up to 73 at the moment who have built their own projects, deployed their own projects and started to use that data to make changes in their own lives and to share it with other people. So the foundation, we said, will work with um, education programs informally and formally from Key Stage 1 to PhD. The context that I'm going to give you this morning, um, I'll show some slides about me just to give you the context and the various hats that I wear. But then, as I said, I'm going to start with the technical setup because we rarely lead with technology in the work that we do. Um, but as a group and as a room this morning, I think we'll all have that common value, that common mission to get more people involved um, in digital activities. Um, so actually, this is the board, this is the microcontroller, it's a new triad board, um, there's a GPS module on there. I didn't realise how exciting that was going to be in community projects until I saw people's faces light up yesterday with Leeds Libraries as that connected with four satellites somewhere around the world and the significance of that. Um, the air quality, it's a Honeywell sensor and we are measuring particulate matter 10 and 2.5. So that's the technical setup. The challenges have been to get a device like that onto a Wi-Fi system. If I work in schools, in libraries, in offices, in industry, you can imagine um, the thoughts and, and the preparation and the development that has been done to get me into a stage to confidently go into any situation and think about what's the Wi-Fi. Um, obviously, we'll use LoRaWAN. So deploying LoRaWAN gateways um, onto a corporate network, onto buildings. Um, what are the technical challenges will we have? Made a note. Um, flaky connectivity. So if I think I'm going to connect air quality, um, and really tag the journey from Leeds this morning on the bus, um, on the train across here and walking up, to actually get people to understand the challenges of, actually, the connectivity is going to dip out to what's going to happen with a device like this. So we've reached a stage now where we have various different recipe cards. What is it that you want to do? What do you want to measure? What do you want to learn? What would you like to understand? And this is the way that you can do that. So context that way, the personal challenges that we've had have obviously been computing, allowing people to um, take a friendly device, plug it in and collect data, but then actually to be able to customise it. It has to be programmable. Um, and whether or not that's a progression of programming series of workshops that we do in schools, um, or if it's working with communities, then we know that it, it needs to be personalised. Little bit of foundation then. It was cake week this week, so we're two years old. Um, this is Andrew, one of the other co-founders. So he's our um, technical lead, our engineering lead. I love this image because it's working with part of the group of um, undergraduates in Manchester, but you can see he's very much pencil and paper. And that's what we'll do. So, so most of our programs are centered around computational thinking, what is it that you want to achieve? Where are you now? Where are you heading to? How can we get you there? And whether it is um, supporting people with the programming elements or with the data science aspects of, of what they've collected, um, then yeah, let's get the paper out and do it that way. Little bit about me then. Um, 
I love this image. So this is a project, wonderful project called This Girl Codes. Um, we're working with a community in Derbyshire, in Bolsover, with Junction Arts. So this takes me back to, I was a teacher. I was a teacher of technology. Um, common question is, why did you make the move to working with community, to working outside of just one school? Um, and I fell into that at a very early stage in my teaching career and literally fell into it. So as I came out of Huddersfield University with my um, B.Ed., I fainted and I hit the deck and I'm big, I'm tall. So it was in the days and the months and actually the years after the double compound skull fracture where language and cognitive load was something of an issue that I had to get over was when I diverted technology teaching with special educational needs. I was teaching six weeks after I fell. I didn't realise the challenges that I was overcoming, but all of a sudden the empathy was there that actually, with the amount of support, how accessible can you make most activities and learning activities? So I'm very much looking at it from a pedagogical teaching aspect. If you support people in the right way and give them, um, give them steps and deconstruct that complexity of what we do, how accessible can things be? So that was a bit of a life-changing moment and one where I think, do you know, I think most things we can deconstruct and there is success from complexity. So that's me again, harking back to, um, I was brought up in a flower shop in Wigan. So I reckon I'm fairly creative, but I have no imagination. And I think some of our programmes, particularly with communities when we see value from, from different participants, I think there's a lot at the moment about imagination, and that's what I lack. Like. So that's me as a teacher and, and where I am now with, with the foundation. Um, and this is a reminder, because of that, my short-term memory isn't as good as it was, my long-term memory, because I've trained it up so well, it's frighteningly good. So this is a reminder, and you'll see from my slides that I'm going to put um, prompts in there. This is a reminder to say thank you for listening this morning because actually me presenting at Wuthering Bites means that Lighthouse School in Leeds um, will benefit from, from a sponsorship where they're going to be the 101st um, air quality sensor on their map. Um, Lighthouse School, if anybody knows the old Cookridge Hospital, is an awesome school for students on um, the autism spectrum. So there's a brilliant teacher there, Michelle, who is a computing specialist, who looks at how we can use computing and physical computing and adapt sessions um, to reduce cognitive um, overload. And I'm really, really excited to see what she does with data science, where they are literally passing the data science baton across the curriculum with her students. So that's what's going to come out of um, today's session. One of my other hats is that I open the door to Leeds Raspberry Jam, so that's the open source community. Um, and our next session will be, our next jam is in October. It's in Ada Lovelace week. And again, I love this quote at the moment because I'm looking um, at research and the differences between creativity and imagination. I love this quote from, from Lovelace about the fact that how imagination maybe can help the pure scientists. And then I start to think, well, where do we go from that really? If we are flying with ideas, and how can that help everybody? In the same way that the SEN school, their strategies can help us all. So next month, we're looking at unplugged um, algorithmic art. And a little bit, we're in Leeds, um, so there'll be a little bit of spirograph, um, that, that kind of ode to Dennis, but away we go there. And then finally, I'm postgraduate researcher at the University in Leeds. So success from complexity, thinking about frustrations and how to help people with frustrations, because generally on a day-to-day -day basis or on a, an hourly basis, something goes wrong with my project. So how can we deal with that? And actually, is it such a paradox that physical computing and what we do, if it is complex, can it impact positively on our own well-being? I think it can and I'm just deconstructing what well-being means. How can we measure it? It's not going to be happiness. And I know I can measure happiness. People have done it. Um, but that's what I'm working towards. The image is helpful because, again, how do we slow down and how do we think? We talk about computational thinking. 
This is a reference to Seymour Papert's work. So they gave a scratch at MIT. Seymour Papert had a fabulous um, expression, which is an object to think with. Generally, you see me with an object to think with. Generally, it might be a microcontroller board, but if I've got that object, just as we heard a few minutes ago, if I stop and think, what's the purpose of that? How important is that to me? What am I going to learn from this? How am I going to change behavior? And that takes us to air quality. So how is an air quality sensor in my hand, my object to think with, how has it helped to change my behaviors and my world and my understanding and those that have um, joined us as well to put those um, sensors on the map? Just as an insight into my world, actually, it's um, I've changed the bus stop that I get off at now. So I constantly walk around with my Uni Keep Safe coffee mug. I generally don't have coffee in there. I've got my water bottle. I've got my air quality sensor in the cup, and then it doesn't look too obvious with all the wires and things. Um, I don't get off at the same bus stop because, quite honestly, the data readings just measure as filthy. So I've changed that in the city in Leeds. Um, what else have I done? When I'm trying to get the train to Manchester, it's health before comfort now. So I'm not right at the platform waiting for a seat. I'm hugging the platform at the back. Um, so, and, and that's where we start to see, really, if we put the hands, if we put tools like that into the hands of more people, not just computer science undergraduates and engineers, what kind of ideas do we come out with? Stunning examples from the families yesterday, as I said, with Leeds Library. Um, and a very recent project was at Manchester Met, and this was funded by Cisco. This was an Internet of Things and IoT makerspace at MMU, but working predominantly with the students from the soda building, so the creative students. I think my research as well, I look at this fourth industrial revolution that we're in. And for me, how that can be different from the first revolution. So the first industrial revolution when children were um, taught what industry wanted, what the mill owners wanted, they were taught to scribe. Actually, this next industrial revolution is not going to be the first 2.0. It's got to be with, I think, education collaborating with industry, and the strength of industry collaboration will make a real difference. But through the teaching part of it, through the pedagogy, and not just maybe a narrow gap of, um, or a narrow column of digital skills. So this, this program is constructionist approach to learning. It's learning by making. We gave the students um, local problems from Manchester. We gave them the Greater Manchester Combined Authority pillars of an aging population, uh, quality in this instance, um, looking at assisted transport. And the students came from these different subject disciplines, which when I, when I show this and when I share this with industry who were talking about a digital um, a di diversity in the digital talent pipeline, it's kind of incredible that the talent I say, I think, <coughs> the talent is there, sometimes it's hidden. What kind of activities can we do to promote digital talent in students themselves and in teachers um, and in lecturers and in industry? So that was a really exciting project whereby um, the students with air quality, they were one of the first projects to put air quality um, sensors onto the map. Um, and this is a mapping exercise that they'd done throughout the city centre. Piccadilly Station was um, a popular spot to walk around and, and try and get readings. Um, this is um, a first iteration when they've used Microsoft Visual Studio just to try and do some visualisations. But each time it will not give any answers, it'll give more questions. Didn't think it was as bad by the trams, why do you think that was? How will that affect um, maybe urban planning in the future? What did you learn? Oxford Road? Do you know it wasn't as high as we thought it was going to be? I wonder why that is. Hang on a minute. We're on the pavement, there's a cycle lane between us and the buses. And that's interesting. Not as high as Leeds. What's the difference? So actually I don't think we we rarely get answers, we get more questions, which is computational thinking. So for us as a foundation, how can we scale this work with engineers in industry and with undergraduates? How can we scale that so we can use the same concepts, 
but with seven-year-olds, and how can we understand that? So I'm going to give you a little bit of a fly-through of some of these projects. Um, one, the Internet of Curious Things. So that's our programme that we'll use in school and in industry. If we give them the option, they tend to use that one. So much in a project name. Um, so this is working with um, Donna Rawlings, primary school teacher in, in Salford, um, with a group of her students. And again, you can see hidden away um, the sensor. But this was um, a prerequisite to a new project which is starting with St Mark's in Salford, um, which is called Made to Measure. So that's going to be with us partnering with the Royal Society to... The students are going to work with their own community. They're going to collect data about uh, quality around them, around the school. And then they're going to work with digital leaders, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and they're going to visualise their data. So that's a new project that started, but that was very much, as you can see, Lego-based and very constructionist. In the same vein, in the same project, which is funded by the IET and the IMEC Eng, um, this was an example of a project thinking about data visualisation. So taking that data baton across the curriculum and working with Cora Glasser, an artist. Going back to my roots of floristry with the two-inch ribbon, that was my contribution that day because we knew it was going to hoof it down. Um, so it's waterproof. But these were Key Stage 1 children and Key Stage 2 in a flexi school um, just on the Staffordshire border, bottom of the Peak District. Um, and the children wanted to keep those afterwards as well, but um, the quality of air there was, was brilliant. Um, it was in a tiny, tiny hamlet. Some of the, the children go to school for one day a week and then they're homeschooled, or it could be five, five days full time. Um, but it's a farming community and those children are generally dropped off in the morning at the same time and in the afternoon, so it comes with um, idling conversations that I didn't presume we would have in the countryside at that point. Love this project of an object to think with. So, so this is a group of children talking to the university in Leeds, wanting to do some event-driven programming with air quality to put the air quality data on the map, but also having a physical object to show people to visualise. So are we all canaries in the 21st century, was their narrative. If you collect data and you've got your pom-pom of a canary on a beautiful kind of antique um, birdcage on a perch, at which point will it tilt 180 degrees? So what are the targets? If they look on the DEFRA site, they'll get targets for PM 2.5. They didn't agree with those. How can you have pollution in the air and say that that's healthy? We don't agree with that. The university said we don't agree with that either. So the children are refusing to share that um, algorithm on GitHub until they've worked out an answer of what is an acceptable level of pollution in the air, which I think is really powerful. So that's, so that's another project. And again, I've got a reminder. This is, um, this is a wonderful project, which was the Internet of Curious Things. This is actually looking at um, environmental data, temperature and humidity. We did some work with Telefonica over the summer, and this came out of a family day, a family coding day. Um, but we will, we have taken the uh, quality um, Internet of Things hardware into industry, if we work with councils, um, then they will be adding um, their own data or their own experience into the Sense and Sensibility programme. Same object to think with, different applications. And then going into informal learning and community. As I said, I'm a PGR at Leeds, but it was 12 months before I started my EDD that we worked as Positive Impact Partner with the Living Lab project at Leeds University. And the map that we've got top right is the work from Living Lab from their scientists and urban planners about tracking your own individual, the air around you as you commute into work or school. As you travel down um, the congested roads through Headingley to get onto campus, what does it look like? We've got a map here which is um, colour-coded, obviously the, the more intense the colour, the more polluted the area of campus. 
you're not going to see it from probably anywhere where you sat, but if I tell you that the dark purple colours are Parkinson's steps at the university, the iconic clock, and where do most students meet each other? Meet you at the bottom of Parkinson's steps. So what happens if you say to the students, why don't you meet each other in the green space at the back? What kind of an effect is that on their what kind of an effect does it have on their health, their well-being? I thought, you know, that's a really interesting idea. I think everybody should be able to do that. I've spoken about me having my object to think with and tracking my own air quality around me. I've changed the, I've changed the route that I walk to campus now because of that. When I press the button to wait for the Pelican Crossing, when I'm waiting for the cars to go past me, I take three steps back because I've used the data to, to try and think about the impact on my own health. Why can't everybody do that? In Leeds, we've only got a small number of air quality sensors. So this is why, through the foundation, we wanted to put the tools into the hands of everybody, empowering everybody. So again, let's have a look. Leeds Digital Festival, back in April, was an opportunity to try out some of the projects in terms of with the GPS, that first iteration in a really friendly um, environment with families. Come along, we'll do a science walk, build a project, build a thing, take it out with you. It's fairly high up. It's probably going to be a windy day. Will that, how will that affect uh, pollution? Can we use that to understand the science behind what is complicated? Um, and... We've had dogs before come into our workshop. This became a, a fairly infamous dog. This is STEM dog. Um, when its owner had an object to think with, she was wondering about dog owners in a city suddenly being, aggregate, being able to aggregate so much data. Would that help? It was just a thought. Somebody else thought, what's the difference of air quality? If, you're, um, if you've got um, a child in a pram, what's the difference in air quality from here as to, to there at their level? And again, the conversations coming from via STEM dog and, and, and just conversations with the community, really powerful thoughts of, of changes we can make. So Digital Festival was a science walk with families. You start to see the correlation now. If the scientists at the university can track their own, movements and work out which is the healthiest side of the walk, of the, the road to walk on. Why shouldn't everybody else? It didn't give any answers, it gave questions. The GPS, he over-engineered it, it did delay the project by a couple of months. I understand now why. So when the families were in the play area, we could see when they'd moved from the swing to the slide, it was that accurate. And then when they came back and they had the CSV and they had the raw data and then they could start to use this mapping tool as well. Why did it spike? Ah, that was the car park. Oh, that's the turning, that's a turning circle for the cars. Why is that so close to the play area? Does that instill that understanding? It's a really friendly way to do it. Um, this is a project that came out of the Leeds Digital Festival. So when you give somebody an object to think with, this person said... I don't really like the cup that it goes in or the, the reusable soup container that you've given us. I'm going to create my own case. I'm going to create this for peers, and this is going to be to help them to, to route, to map out a healthier route to school or work. And she created this, which went into the Business of Science conference. Now, interestingly, it was picked up by Graphene Manchester, who sponsored the competition. And now we've got a 13-year-old from Leeds working with graphene to literally shrink that project, and our constructionist work of it being so chunky, to shrink that into a pin badge. Now I wonder really about if it's in a pin badge and that's mapping people's individual routes. I think, first of all, they ought to put it in the Mother Invites pin badge. They're talking about e collect pin badges, so they've got to be customizable. But to get them back really next year and to say, well, what about the data ethics and, and how can you work with people and um, how can they share data? Do they have to share data? But you could start to map it. Um, but a brilliant idea again when I think about walking to, to campus, when I pass 
cars that are idling, what kind of a difference does it make if I cross the road? Something like a pin badge, I think, would help. But that was their object to think with, and that's, um, that was their idea that came from it. And the final couple of community projects to share over in West Leeds and Bramley. Um, this is a project which is gathering pace now. So there's a community um, Facebook group, a closed Facebook group, which the Bramley Community Centre is at the heart of this and they're driving this. The project is called um, Bramley Weather Stations. It doesn't contain air quality. That was their decision. So this is a community-led project with um, the centre, with schools, with a group of scouts, with counsellors, adults and children. Where's it going to next? I have no idea. It's not my project. I'm facilitating it. It is community-led. It's their decisions. So a week last Sunday, I was doing some science walks at the Bramley Festival. Um, and again, just starting to think about how will people deploy their projects um, and how will they connect and share data when they've installed them? Will it be on an external windowsill of a second floor flat where somebody's concerned about the traffic and how often they have their window open? Is it the mum who's going to nursery and is concerned about their, their path to, to nursery and school? So that will pan out that way, but then it's also informing the councillors coming from the community. So Beverly and, and two of the scouts here. A week on Monday, um, I'm supporting them with their digital badge. So the scouts are going to do the digital badge, um, having a look at some of the data ethics and privacy, online safety around that, so it'll be straddling two badges for them, um, but it'll be the first time that I've worked with an IoT badge for the scouts. And then this was me last Friday. So this is a homework group. This is um, a housing association. Is it gone? A housing association um, group where they wanted to get families involved and are working initially with the children. So last Friday was a visit to the woods, collecting bugs and collecting air quality data. It's a windy day. It had been raining. It's really good conditions for air quality. Um, so we're going to track through and start looking at data. And then final project is something a little bit different. So funded with LNER, we've had a series of workshops for adults in Leeds and hosted at Eagle Labs. The series has been um, three days, three, three workshop sessions of building an IoT device, thinking about connectivity, um, collecting data. You can see the group of adults bottom left. And then they're at the stage now where they've taken their projects back into the community. So one went to the Extinction Rebellion shutdown. And if you know Leeds, the tunnel just by the, the train station was just where they closed the road. How did that change air quality during that week? Um, that group is made up of scientists, computer scientists, developers, and people come in to learn some programming for the first time. So that was a real mixed um, group. But again, um, some of them will validate their data, have it in a fixed position because they've got a definite priority. They've got something definite they want to investigate. And that's a whistle-stop tour. So the foundation is working with adults and children, we're always looking to collaborate. We're always looking to um, share the findings, share the, share the development that we've done, um, look at the open source hardware and then the software, the intent there. And there's one other, act, um, one other program that I'd like to share today because actually you may be an engineer or be involved with engineers in your own community. But there's a new project, the Hat Camp UK, which sees the foundation working with Edgehill University and Wigan Steam and Mako Create, which is the Ingenious Fund. We're going to be supporting engineers to do um, more outreach work and to equip them with skills, work with them to create co-design activities um, for outreach work in the community. So if you want 
to ask any questions about particular projects or how you can get involved with the Royal Academy of Engineering and Genius programme or what we've done with particular um, community groups, we might have time for a couple of questions or if not, I can speak to you throughout the day. Thank, thank you. Time, thank you so thank much. Thank you for your time. time.